afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining our webinar today with Quick Tag. Um, Thank you, Allie. And thanks everyone for joining us. Today, we're going to discuss how to improve your BC invoice process with intelligent AP automation. So hopefully you're in the right spot. So who we have on the call from our side here, I'm Michael Sortino, I'm partner manager here at QuickTag. Mary Miller is our director of marketing and channel, and she's here with us in spirit. She's actually on an airplane right now. So she helped organize these. And we also have Michael Velasquez, who is our senior technical product manager. Hey, Michael, how are you this morning? I'm doing well. Good to be here. Thank you. Yep. And Michael is going to be doing the demo for us. Tom Fitzgerald, hopefully a lot of you know already, he works with you on the day-to-day -day basis, finding the right solution for you. He's our senior account executive. Hey, everybody. Glad to be with you today. And thank you. I know you guys are all so busy these days. We really appreciate your time and, and being here with us. We're very excited for you guys to see what we have going on with BC and AP Automation. So look forward to this time with you. Yes, indeed. So quickly, what we'll be going over, I'll walk you through a landscape that we're um, kind of all finding ourselves in nowadays when it comes to AP. So we'll go over the digital shift in AP, some of the industry research that uh, kind of supports hopefully what you're, what you're facing on a daily basis and the case that you make to those in charge as far as change goes. Talk about the new role of AI in all of this. And then MV will do the demonstration of Simply AP. Don will go over some of the key points as to face the market today and face your challenges and your needs. We've got a great case customer, customer case study. <laughs> That's the right order of saying that one. And, uh, and then we'll go over some benefits and room for your questions. And we'd love to, to hear from you. So please type those in the Q&A spot or the chat, either one, whichever one you can find throw them in there and we'll be happy to go over those at the end. So without further ado, let's uh, let's talk in about the digital shift in AP. Really, it's it's what all of us have um, have been seeing happen over a number of years. We went from the majority of organizations working out of a central office building, uh, you know, as, as organizations grow, um, as, as people, as the landscape has changed, we started to see a lot more disparate locations and um, distributing many of the accounting tasks to other sites, regional sites, et cetera. And even before the pandemic, we started seeing a lot more location-based receipt of invoices, some locations even doing the coding and right there when they got it and then sending it in, even like mailing it in to the, to the main office. And then we saw the transition to, I'm sure all of us are dealing with this in one way or another, the remote workforce, right? How do you, how do you transition everybody to working from home. Um, we started seeing a lot of teams having difficulty getting on the same page, getting on the same system. And also the process of approving invoices took a while to figure out, especially with everyone working from home. It often was that one AP person who had to run to the office every week and gather up the mail. Vendors aren't the easiest to adapt to our needs at times. So, so not a lot of them have adapted to this digital need of, of sending in those invoices by email or into system. So we saw a lot of that going on. The things are, are still shifting, but we'll talk a little bit about how that, that uh, is shifting moving forward. Subscription purchasing is the next item here. This is really, as we saw, more department managers and budget owners taking on purchasing, and they found subscription services that are easy to manage with auto payment on a corporate card for example, and uh, this, this could be convenient, it could be good for the company, but sometimes it could also pose a, a difficulty because there's lack of visibility. Maybe there's decisions being made that are hard to manage because there's other factors going on that you want more people in on that discussion and on that, um, on that decision. You know, so without visibility and communication in a centralized system, it's uh, sometimes anybody's guess as to whether that's the right vendor or the right subscription to be used in that situation. So cloud adoption is the last last part here. This is obviously the question and the discussion that we're that everyone's having moving systems to the cloud. We have seen in the last, I would say two or three years, mostly uh, most of our our prospects, our customers coming to us wanting a cloud solution. Right now, I believe that number is around eighty five percent of people who come to us, 
they are, are asking for a cloud solution. It's definitely on everybody's mind. So, so this, is, this is the landscape we're in. As far as specifically with AP challenges, a lot of these will ring true to you, I'm sure. And, 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 and uh, you know, this is why we're here. We're here to help. Um, so we're not here to rub it in your face. We're here to say, okay, yeah, we understand the problems and the challenges that you're facing. These are, these are common ones. The number one there, 74% indicate that manual data entry and inefficient processes are, is their top challenge, right? Manual routing of invoices for approval, that's 68%. High number of discrepancies and exceptions is next. So a lot of these top ones feed into the bottom ones. So not knowing in, in paper invoices coming and not knowing how to deal with those, that's slowing down the process, losing or missing an invoice. All of these things tend to uh, cause bottlenecks, cause delays, and eventually it impacts your bottom line, right? And the, the bottom note there here, as CFO, CFOs plan to reinvent their businesses as we're all coming out of this pandemic, nearly a third are looking to tech driven products to help solve these problems. And last noted, it was 54% who plan to keep the remote workforce in place. So these challenges aren't necessarily going too far away, right? Now let's talk about the new role of AI in AP. The great thing is, is like, I mean, we hear artificial intelligence being discussed out there a lot in the world. And it's nice to know that it is being applied to your world, right? So AI and AP mostly relates, in, in our case, when it comes to data extraction and invoice process, right? And this is exactly where it needs to, needs to be. And we've got some exciting things to show you and, and talk about further around that. But it does enable more automation and even auto approvals at times um, based on variances. So this is something that we're, we're super excited to use that technology there as well. And as you saw, the key top issue was manual data entry and the AI, the role of AI there definitely does uh, uh, you know, alleviate that completely. So artificial intelligence in your data extraction and invoice approval process then streamlines the process end to end, even bypassing human intervention altogether, if that's, you know, if that's what you're looking for. And we'll, we'll, we'll be showing you that as well. MB will show you that in a moment. So we're going to address these challenges that you're facing. And also, while we're doing that, the great thing that we've seen as well is that technology has brought down the cost. So these new, the new way of approaching things is now a usage-based model as opposed to a, um, a license-based model. So this has brought the solution cost down, making it more affordable as well. So. Without further ado, let's talk about Simply AP. This is the name, this is our product for BC Invoice AP Automation. And Sean, do you wanna go ahead and walk us through what what uh, what our key differentiators are and benefits? There? Yeah, yeah, you bet. Thanks, Michael. So yeah, so we obviously we're focusing right on an automated AP process for sure. So uh, in Simply, with Simply AP, and when it comes to processing invoices, vendor invoices for review, approval, payment through Dynamics BC, you know, using Simply AP, you're going to see that uh, you know it's going to be really easy. Things are going to come into the solution. I, I always say that. I say come in. How do they get in? You can email them in for sure. If you happen to have some that uh, come in hard copy, you can scan them in. That's the easiest part of it. But what we really do for you, give you the opportunity at least, is to give you a touchless process on these invoices, kind of the thing we've always wanted. So think of an invoice that comes in. It's related to a purchase order. Uh, it matches up. It's within your, you know, matches up either perfectly or within a, a variance that you'll allow for. QuickTag will just take that in, do the data entry and pass it and put it right into BC for you. That's an option. Don't have to do it that way, but you can set it up that way. So just imagine that world with invoices where they just could flow right into your system, right? In terms of, you know, our integration into Dynamics BC, it really is seamless. And I don't even like the wording integration. I always love to use the word with QuickTag of it being uh, embedded because that's, a you know, anybody can integrate, right? Export, import, we'll get that data into this solution. Now, QuickTag's much tighter than that. It's, uh, it's such, so seamless and tight. I think of it as being embedded in BC and you'll see that in the demo. 
really easy to scale. So we, as Michael already said, we do an unlimited licensing model from the perspective of the number of users. So easy, you know, you just go in, assign, you know, and can scale up that way. If it's a document scaling issue where, hey, we, you know, acquired this other company, our invoice volume is going to double overnight, essentially, no worries. That's the beauty of a native cloud solution as well, right? That it can just scale like that. Really quick time to solution in terms of getting this thing up and running. You'll spend more time internally talking about it than you probably will actually when it comes around to the day of implementation. And I say the day because it can be done in one day. If you guys got your thing, you got your user list ready to go, you know how you want to do your workflows in terms of the, you know, turning the wrenches inside of simply AP to get this up and running, it can be done less than a day actually. So, uh, and MV will talk more about that. Very secure in terms of, uh, of, of the, uh, from a security perspective, you know, this is hosted and Google cloud services. We have a, we have a BC Azure credentials, uh, you know, in terms of uh, users and everything. So, and then in terms of coming back to it, uh, yeah, you already said you can set it up yourself, but in terms of like establishing your workflow and then making a change down the road, very much a self-service model. Uh, you're not going to need to call us, ask us, there'll be no, you know, and perhaps have some kind of a professional services charge. Those days are all gone. Um, this is at your fingertips where you can make the adjustments that you need to. Yeah, that's great, Sean. So tell us about uh, some of the workflows that we handle and that MV will be showing today. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of you too that, you know, I want to recognize that, you know, a lot of you that work with the TM group for years, I've been working with so many of you on, on Dynamics GP, right? And, and some of you, I would assume, are probably on another system, probably GP these days. And perhaps you're here because you're looking at going to BC in the future. So I want to let you know that, you know, all most of what we're saying, we could, you know, insert GP into this conversation rather than BC. So we still have this cloud-based, fantastic solution for Dynamics GP. If you're using it, great. We can transition you easily to, to simply AP. If you're not and you're thinking, well, you know, I need it now, but I also want to, you know, I might go to BC in six months, nine, 12, 18, whatever it is, right? No worries, because you can have GP AP automation and we can transition you easily from a licensing perspective and from a systems, right? You know, a technology perspective very easily. So don't, I, want, I just wanted to mention that. And I bring that up because the process you see on screen is similar in both solutions. I've already kind of alluded to it really, you know, invoice comes in, it goes through, you know, the data extraction part, we capture it. And then we, with automated AI and machine learning technologies, we, we read the invoice, do the data entry for you, put it into the system. If it is related to a purchase order, we'll match it up. And there it says, you know, automatic invoice approval workflow. So if it needs to go to someone else, you can route it that way. But if it does, but if it doesn't, if it matches, as it says there, we'll just push it all the way through to the right on your screen there with, you know, right into BC. Now you may throw some rules in there that say, hey, if there's an exception that meets, that exceeds a certain percentage, kick it out and make somebody review it. Or you might say, hey, this is going into my ERP, my system, my financial system of record. I'm looking at every invoice. That may be your mindset. And that's great. You can have every single one of them always uh, teed up for final review before it goes to BC. And we do more than that. This is kind of, you know, this shows you how we match things up with PO. We also do it for non-PO, no problem there as well. Very much the same thing, but it would then obviously, typically our clients prefer our non-PO invoices most of the time to route to someone for review and approval or two or three, four tiers of approval, whatever the case calls for, but sometimes not. Sometimes, no, this is a recurring invoice. We know we're going to have to pay this. We know what the amount is. We know we're going to pay it. So let's set that up for a straight pass through as well. And we can do that also. That's great. Thanks, Sean. We're going to go ahead and get set up for the demo here. Again, a lot of your questions will most likely be answered during the demo, but we will uh, encourage you to just type them in anyway as they come up as MV walks you through the product. Yeah, so you know, I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, a lot of what's been discussed thus far, a little more in detail, walk you through the, the process itself, as well as some administrative sundry items at the end. And again, we welcome your questions. If you have any questions, go ahead and chat, uh, put them in the chat box, and, and we'll address those as well. I'm going to go ahead and log in to Simply AP here and get started. So as, as Sean mentioned, and, and you saw on some slides, we, we do accept a, a number of different ways of getting invoices into the system. Ideally speaking, and traditionally at this point, the majority of those are likely going to come in via email. 
you know, a vendor AP inbox uh, that can be forwarded into Simply AP, or you can still, uh, you know, if you do have to uh, scan in hard copy invoices, we do support that as well. Uh, you know, if you have your your uh, your scanners on your desktop or you know down the hall, we can point those to Simply AP for you and scan those invoices in. You can also take advantage of this little plus icon here to uh, manually go ahead and browse out digitally to any invoices you have on your desktop or or a network share or wherever those digital invoices may be may be sitting. Once they come in. Um, Prior to even hitting this invoice list that you see here, they are going to go up to that uh, intelligent invoice analysis tool that we talk about in, in the slides. We leverage a, a technology to read the invoices through machine learning and AI from left to right, top to bottom, just like a human eye would. That's actually looking for uh, invoice data, um, invoice number, total amount, vendor information, purchase order information, all that kind of stuff. We grab as much information from the invoice that we possibly can, while at the same time turning around and going into the BC data and, and grabbing uh, subsequent information, pur purchase order information, vendor information, that kind of stuff. So we can try and take care of as much of that data entry as possible for you. This is not zonal OCR. This is not uh, template based. You don't have to train the system at all. We take care of all of that for you. It's a managed service that's that's included with Simply AP. So all of this data here that you see in this list was all it was all pre-populated for me. I haven't had to key any of this in. No users here have keyed this information and it's all been pre-populated for us. As invoices come in and I'm ready to process one or more of them, I, I can uh, do a quick search if I need to. Uh, maybe I'm responsible for a certain vendor that I'm looking for. Maybe it's the Uline vendor. I can start typing character by character and it's gonna bring all those Uline invoices up. I can do a simple search by invoice number, maybe by purchase order number, and it'll bring up that, that invoice there. I can also do an advanced search if I wanted a little bit more robust criteria, maybe a date range. If I didn't quite know the vendor name, I can actually do a search based off my vendors that are in BC for this company. I can narrow that down. I can do maybe a threshold-based search for the total. A lot of different information here that I can narrow my results set down for. Next here, you can also see some color-coded workflow statuses. Over here on the right, you'll see the status column. These are all sortable if you did want to sort these columns in any way you see fit. But if I were, say, responsible for a specific role within workflow, maybe I just want to see I'm on the AP team and I'm, in, uh, I'm, I'm uh, responsible for the items that have been rejected. I can deselect these other statuses and just narrow down my result set to just the rejected items. Likewise, maybe if I'm an approver and I just want to see, you know, the one, the items that are pending approval, I can go ahead and, and just click the pending approval items. And if there is a single item in that result set, it'll automatically expand and, and open up that, uh, that invoice. Now, if you'll notice, I go back to my list here, current assignee. If I'm an AP person and I'm coming in here to process an invoice, I'm, I'm going to see a current assignee column with a lot of named users who have assignments already. Now, as invoices come in, they're going to be assigned to the AP team. So you'll see this Corp AP assignment. This means that it is actually, it has not begun the processing step. So it is still up for grabs, as it were. If I were an AP person and I wanted to come in and grab the, the latest invoice that came in, this is assigned to the Corp AP team. As you can see, all the information is grayed out. I can't actually do anything with this invoice until I claim it. Once I claim it, it's going to assign to myself. That's me, you know, explicitly taking ownership of this invoice. So now it is assigned directly to me. No one else can interact with this invoice. Nobody else can, can uh, send this for approval. No one else can modify any data, any of that kind of stuff. So it's going to limit that potential for parallel work, you know, people stepping on each other's toes, wasting time, wasting resources. It's also going to give management really good visibility into what invoices are assigned to, you know, which individuals really good. So I can also unclaim the invoice if, you know, maybe I, I grabbed one by accident or I'm going home sick for the day and, you know, management says, oh, we got to get that invoice processed, you know, let someone else grab it. I can go ahead and unclaim them. Workflow administrators can also come in and, and reassign invoices if they need to, if somebody does, you know, end up going, going home sick or, or whatever the case is. Once the invoice is claimed and becomes something I can actually interact with, I'll see a few things that have changed. You may notice that the color coding 
on the fields has changed from grayed out to a couple of these are green, a couple of them are yellow. So what that's telling me is that's giving me the indication of the confidence level of our AI machine learning engine that extracted this information. If it's green, you can be, you know, pre pretty darn sure that we're, that we're positive that what we got was correct. So that invoice number is going to match the invoice number on the, uh, on the invoice itself. Total amount, okay, due date, maybe, you know, we're, we're, we're fairly confident, but we want to just have you verify. Maybe there was, uh, you know, it, it, it wanted to make sure that a, a zero wasn't an O or, you know, an L wasn't an I or, or a one or something like that. Just take a look. If it were red, you know, in, in an infrequent use case, because that doesn't happen very often at all, is, is that maybe there was a smudge on the invoice. Maybe there was a, a crease going right through the invoice number, something like that, to where we don't want to presume to know or, or give you the idea that, yep, this is good. Don't worry about it. Keep going. No, we want you to take a look at that. We want you to verify it, make sure that everything looks good so that, uh, you know, later on down the line, there's not any, any issues once this gets pushed in, into BC. A lot of things you can do with this information, a lot of things we can do with this information. We've matched the vendor from the invoice against the vendor in BC. We've grabbed the purchase order number off the invoice. So we were able to identify that this is a PO. Uh, if it's not, you know, you can flip this to a non-purchase order invoice if you need to, and, and then you can go ahead and do your account coding. But in this case, it is a purchase order invoice. We grabbed the, the invoice total. Right here, you'll notice that it says coded amount, $94 and difference of zero. That's telling me that it grabbed the purchase order number, turned around, looked into BC for this vendor, looked up any purchase orders that match that purchase order number. And if there have been any items that have been received against that PO, it's going to tally up the amounts, the total amount, and it's going to give me that coded amount here. It's going to real time do a comparison and analysis against the invoice total and tell me if there was a difference. If there was a difference, this would give me the exact dollar, uh, dollar value and it would be red. It'd be alerting me, hey, you know, there's an issue here. There's some kind of discrepancy between how much you're being invoiced and, and whatever you've received to date. Now, we're gonna be able to do a few things above and beyond just informing you that there was an issue. If there was not an issue, and you did want to take advantage of our straight through processing feature. This is not mandatory, but we do offer a feature whereby you can set two configurations in your administration portion of, of the application. One is going to be your percentage variance. And that's going to say that if the difference here, if it's a dollar or if it's 50 cents or if it's $2.34, if that falls within that percentage variance that you configured, maybe you said, I'm okay with a variance of two and a half percent or 5%. I'm good with that. If it's, if the difference is that minimal, you know what, just push it right through. Just, just create that in BC. Let's get this invoice paid. Let's keep this vendor happy. I got some term discounts I want to take advantage of. Just push it through. I don't want to bog down AP. I don't want this to sit in a queue. And, you know, I have purchase price variance configurations on my BC side that's going to take care of it. Don't worry about it. Just push it through. Now, that's all well and good as long as the invoice itself was relatively small. You know, $94 invoice isn't, isn't going to cause uh, too many ruffled feathers if it's within a 2.5% variance. So what if this invoice was a $500,000 invoice? We're also going to give you a second configuration that's the dollar limit. As long as that percentage variance doesn't breach the dollar limit. So maybe you put a limit of $5 or $10 or, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with, as long as that difference is within that percentage variance, also not breaching the dollar limit, we're going to auto create that in BC. It's not even going to land in this list for, for AP to take a look at. It's going to bypass this process completely. It's going to push into BC and you're going to get that invoice paid. If either one of those instances does not get satisfied, it will land in this queue. This will be red, and you'll know this was an exception. 
we're going to need to do something here. Maybe there was an issue in receiving, maybe the, the unit cost changed, maybe the vendor, you know, uh, made a mistake on the invoicing process side, whatever the case is, you're going to be able to handle it here. You can route it around for review. You can contact the vendor, whatever you need to do. But again, that straight through processing is there if you need it to. And at any point you can deactivate it as well. If, if you uh, aren't, aren't uh, comfortable with it. And I'll show you that again in, in the administration portion. Uh, so the next step would be the, uh, th this middle section here, the grid section. The first tab here is items. Again, we do pull in the purchase order information from Business Central, and we pre-populate the line items that have been received. In this case, there's only been one line item. If there were more, they'd, they'd land here. Also, uh, we, we do have, have customers that have the, the use case where obviously an invoice can be invoicing multiple purchase orders. We'll, we'll grab the first purchase order populated. If you do have subsequent POs, you can go ahead and enter the PO number down here. And likewise, it will go into BC and pull in any received items off that purchase order as well. I'm going to go ahead and collapse this so we can see a little more real estate here. But you can see this is going to mirror Business Central's line item experience. So if you need to modify the remaining quantity, the unit cost. Also, if you if you do take advantage of dimension coding on the Business Central side, we do have full support for dimension coding at the line item level, as well as up here at the invoice level. So if you do your dimension coding here, you can take advantage of that. You know, if, if, if you did need to remove any line items that maybe weren't on this invoice, but were received at some point, you can do that as well. Again, if this were a non-purchase order invoice, this is where you would do your account coding. We can go ahead and, and take a look at the chart of accounts from Business Central right here. We are integrated, as, as Sean mentioned, in uh, Business Central. So if maybe this was a vehicle expense, I could do my coding here. I could uh, you know, do my dimension coding as well, whatever I need to do to take advantage of, of my non-purchase order invoice process. Again, dimension coding. I can add my dimension coding if I need to. You know, we, we, we fully uh, support the whole reporting aspect of dimension coding on the BC side. So we do want to make sure that uh, you have availability of dimensions there. Uh, comments, please review. Uh, go ahead and submit my comment. And then obviously history is going to be a, a, big, a big one. This is something we take very seriously. We do audit track every single action that's taken on an invoice, whether it be claiming it, routing it for a review, rejecting it, approving it editing it, the, the exact uh, date stamp, date and time stamp that Simply AP not only receives it, but also auto creates it into Business Central. And you'll see that list grow as we go through the, the approval process. This is a, a PO invoice, so likely we wouldn't be sending this for review, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that for demo purposes, route it to myself. Down here, the status changed. Maybe you looked away for a sec, but it went from that gray new to a pending. I'm also going to be receiving an email as an approver to, let's see, I'll show you that right here, grab it from my other screen. So this is going to be what that email looks like for, for uh, if you have items in, in review. Uh, this only has a single invoice, but if you had multiples, they would list down here. They can show you the aging on how long they've been sitting in your queue, the invoice information, uh, and then a link back to Simply AP to go ahead and review that invoice. In Simply AP back here, you're going to see the pending invoice, the invoice itself. You can download it. You can take a look at all the invoice information, the comments to date, the, uh, you know, who sent this to me for review, when it came in, how long it's kind of been sitting in Simply AP's process. Say, okay, you know, this is okay to pay this invoice. Obviously, conversely, you can reject it if need be. We'll get assigned back to corporate AP uh, to remedy whatever the issue was. Now this next step, it's, it's configurable, it's optional, and it is the ready for ERP step. So you'll see up here this green status, ready for ERP. A couple of these in the list are, are in that status as well. So once an invoice has been approved, whether it's purchase order based or non-PO based invoice, we can add a, an optional step for a final review prior to the invoice being created in Business Central. So we have customers who, you know, take it a little more, they're a little more sensitive to, to their books in, in the ERP and want to make a, a final check on, on what's gone, you know, what's uh, happened through the workflow process, make sure the account coding is, is definitely correct, make sure whatever information they want to validate, they can in this final review. So once I approve this, 
it's actually going to be sent back to corporate AP in a ready for ERP step. So I'll go ahead and click in here. And again, it is assigned back to corporate AP. So I'm going to go ahead and claim it back to myself. Let's see. So everything looks good. I can take a look at the invoice itself, you know, maybe the history, who sent this in, who reviewed it, comments. Yep, it looks like it's okay to pay if I want to double check the account coding or the line items themselves. At this step, it is editable if I do need to fix anything. So maybe there was a mistake. Maybe I wanted to add, you know, some, some uh, information to the, to the invoice itself. I can do that here. And then once I submit it, this is that last step in Simply AP. So this will be auto created into Business Central. So once I click submit here, it's going to leave my Simply AP invoice list and it's going to be pushed into Business Central. So here we are over in Business Central. I'm going to go into my purchase invoices screen. You'll see over here on the right hand side in the fact box, Simply AP. This is where we are embedded, as Sean said. It is very, very light footprint. It is an app extension that's available at the app source right now. Uh, it takes about two, three clicks and it's installed. Extremely easy to install. I'm going to go ahead and sort by uh, newest up here. So here's my webinar uh, invoice that we were looking at. And I'm going to go ahead and click view. And that's going to take me right back to Simply AP. It's going to take me directly to that invoice, show me that the status has now changed to created in ERP. Again, I can see the invoice. I can take a look at the audit history all the way through. Final review is completed at this time. And Simply AP itself sent it into Business Central immediately thereafter. I can take a look at the comments, uh, whatever I need to do at this point. And that's as, as, like we say, as simple as it can be. Next, I'd like to go ahead and, and take a look at the administration portion of things. We do have an extremely fast time to solution. Uh, we really pride ourselves on getting this up and running and, and uh, getting you processing invoices as soon as you possibly can to alleviate that, uh, that AP process that you currently have. So uh, if you are an administrator, so if your role with, within Simply AP, your user role has an administrative privileges, you'll see the administration button here. I'll go ahead and click that and I'll be sent to the admin portal. We do have user guiding tutorials. We actually have these on the Simply AP, AP user interface as well. I did not show that, but it will give you step-by-step -step information on certain areas and components of the user interface and, and what, uh, what is involved. Searching. Hey, Michael. Yes. Can I just interrupt you and step in here a second? I just yeah. want to make sure everybody's paying attention to what's going on here. Because full disclosure, I was just multitasking and uh, <laughs> I was responding to somebody who uh, we've done a demo for, right, for, Sim for, for Simply AP. And their response was, oh, we're going to go live with BC, but we're going to wait until we're live with BC. And then we're going to bring in QuickTag for AP automation. And I was trying to make the point to them of how easy it is to go live with, with this solution. And this is the step right here that you're in now. So if that's you out there listening and you're like, ah, we'll do AP automations, you know, phase two, that's very common, right? We've been all been doing this a long time. That's how you used to approach this, but you don't need to do that anymore because this is so easy. We can literally have you go live simultaneously with BC and AP automation. There's just no... I don't mean to be rude about it, but there's like no excuse not to do it when you see how easy it is. And this is step one and it's super simple. So just wanted to kind of really highlight this part of the demo because it's, 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 it's simple. So there you go. Yeah, definitely. No, I, I, I agree that that couldn't have been uh, better said, you know, we have that customer case study coming up that we're, we'll, we'll discuss just how easy this has been for, for our customers to date with, with their simply AP onboarding. And, you know, it, it's uh, you don't have to be an IT professional, you know, if you have some basic IT prowess, you know, you can definitely get up and running extremely, extremely easily. So, uh, and again, we're going to be here every step of the way, you know, your partner is going to be able to help you out, you know, we'll be there uh, and you can use these user guiding tutorials and it's going to be extremely simple. So I'm going to go step by step here and click the user guiding here. And it's going to tell me my first step is going to be the ERP settings. This is going to be how we integrate into Business Central. There's maybe three or four fields here that aren't going to be pre-populated that you need to enter in some information into. So it's going to be the ERP 
base URL, some some other information. And we're going to be as, as detailed as possible in these tutorials. So we actually even have links to some knowledge base articles that go even deeper into each of these fields and what they mean and what they, you know, what we're going to be requiring here. Once you save these key values off, it's going to show that you've been connected into the ERP. Next, we're going to move over to the identity provider. This is going to be how the authentication is handled. We do not handle any authentication on the Simply AP side. We defer completely to your Microsoft Azure Active Directory implementation. So you are going to be able to manage and handle all the authentication on your end. We defer completely to your security protocols, your security policies. We don't presume to know how you uh, set up your users and your roles and your permissions on your directory side. So when you specify which users you want access to Simply AP, we'll go ahead and, and, and respect that. So once that information is entered, again, it'll say connected. There's that knowledge base article for uh, the IDP information. And when you click done, that's the integration settings. That's the, the heavy lifting. You know, that very simple process right there gets you integrated into BC and integrated into your identity provider for your user management piece. The next step would be going into your companies. And again, once you're integrated into Business Central, we're going to suck in those BC companies that you have set up in BC, your associated vendors for those companies. And then you can also associate which users you want with those, with those companies in Business Central. Down here is that PO invoice tolerance, that straight through processing configuration. If you do want to take advantage of that, go ahead and add a new line here, set your percentage variance, as well as your not to exceed amount dollar limit, and then go ahead and activate that. And at any given point, if you, you know, uh, want to deactivate that, you can. Every subsequent invoice to this action will either respect or bypass the PO invoice tolerance level. Uh, users, uh, so again, likewise, when you set up that identity provider, we're going to suck in any of those users you've assigned to that Active Directory group. If you do have subsequent users that you add at a later time or conversely remove from that list, You'd come in here and click this import users from IDP. That'll resync your user list, your Simply AP users with that Active Directory configuration. Once you are uh, good to go with your users that are, have been sucked in, well, you set your approval limit. Uh, in this case, Daniel Alexander, we've set him to an $8,000 threshold authority, both for purchase order invoices as well as non POs. You can have that different if you want. Next would be that. Uh, for each Simply AP implementation, we're going to have an unlimited final approver. This is going to be your CFO or your president or whomever you deem has the highest approval authority in your company. So say there's a $5 million invoice that comes through, it's obviously going to breach everyone else's limit and it needs to land somewhere. So, you know, we're going to put it in this person's queue and they're going to say whether or not this is good to go. And that's going to be indicated over here on the left with a little dollar sign in the user list. The last thing is going to be their approval routing. It's 100% dynamic based on user. You can set each user's approval routing differently depending on their department or their organizational structure, whatever you decide. So in this case, maybe Daniel Alexander, if an invoice is above $8,000, it's automatically going to route to Mary Miller. Okay, um, and then maybe for non-purchase order invoices, I want them to go to Matt O'Neill. And then I can jump over to Mary Miller. Hers is $150,000. If it breaches hers, I want it to then go to Michael Sertino. So all the way up the chain until I'm, I'm either, you know, complete with their routing or it will go to their unlimited final approver. And again, that that's it. That's as, as easy as, as it can be. We, we again, worked uh, is, um, very diligently to make this a fast time to solution. We wanted you to get onboarded and, and make your life easier as quickly as possible and, and uh, again, as simply as possible. So uh, once you finish those, uh, those small configurations, you can then start sending uh, invoices into Simply AP and, and take advantage of the Business Central AP automation that we offer. That's great. Thank you, Michael. Hopefully, you know, a picture says a thousand words, but we do want to talk about a customer case study just to bring it home. Hopefully you can relate. 
this particular customer were uh, excited because I believe they're going to be doing a talk with us at Summit this year. So if anyone is, is headed yes. to Summit in, or next month, you can come in and see this customer share live their experience as well. But Sean, go ahead and talk us through this. Yeah, this is exciting. So this is a, a company that, uh, as you can see there in the overview part of it, this was a, a nonprofit healthcare technology company, and they provided their, their technology services to 130, uh, over 130 community health centers. The company itself had multiple locations across the country. And, you know, the, and that used to be kind of a thing with AP automation that, oh, we have so many locations, we need to get this automated because we can't pass invoices around. But to be honest with you, everyone, I don't even, that's not even a thing anymore. What I mean is everybody wants AP automation, whether they only have one location or multiple. So it, it's always needed. Now, the thing that's great about this client is that, uh, is that they were a QuickTag client using QuickTag with AP automation, what's called Quick Payables for Dynamics GP. They'd been a client of ours for a long time, but they were moving to BC and they wanted AP automation for BC. Well, this goes back a ways and we didn't have it yet, right? We weren't there. So they thought, well, do we wanna go back to the days of a manual paper-based process and lack of visibility and, right, and all those same challenges they used to have back, you know, back before they got Quick Payables? And they said, absolutely not. We're not, of course, right? We're, we got to have same for same when we move to BC. So Michael, you can click to the next screen on there. Again, everything that you just, we just got done talking about, right? They were going to be able to take advantage of with, you know, they wanted the automated data extraction. They absolutely had to have the, you know, the, what you might think of as an OCR. That's kind of a data term these days, because as, as Michael just got done telling you, this is all about artificial intelligence and, and machine learning and, they were going to have purchase orders now, and they needed the matching tools that we have. But again, we weren't ready. We didn't have it. So they went and bought an, a different product. You know, sad to see them go, but you know, they had to have a solution in place. And so they bought a product, and it didn't meet their needs. So that crashed and burned. They bought another one, and that didn't meet their needs. And they bought another one. I'm not kidding you, everyone. They had three implementations. They called me at some point while using the third solution saying, this one isn't going to work either. Where is, we've seen these emails, they're still on our email list. We've seen these emails about Simple AP. Where is it? And I said, guess what? Now it's, it, it's ready. It's out there. They purchased in July and you know, we had a couple of discussions with them, but they loved the demo. They wanted it right away. I had some discussions with them, but when implementation day came around, it really was a total of about three hours. If you piece together the time they actually spent on implementation and testing, it came to around three hours. I'm not kidding you. That This is not sales guy spin. This is today's technology. That's just the way it works. And so that's about all it took. And the CFO at the organization was really kind of our lead tech guy on this, believe it or not. And at the end of it, he laughed. He said, wow, it's so easy. Even a CFO can do it, right? <laughs> when talking just about the implementation and getting them all set up. So they're really excited about it. Things are going well. And as everyone, as we just said, they're going to be co-sponsoring, participating in a solution, in a uh, session with us at Dynamic Summit in Orlando. Yeah, ha thanks, Sean. Ha happy to have them still with us. You bet. And um, hopefully that story can, your story can be similar. Um, if, you're, if you're listening and, and following along, just to sum up here, you've seen through the solution how our AI-based indexing minimizes, minimizes that data entry. Everything just is there. That's the beauty of it. There's no other interface. It's, it's, Michael showed you, it's just, you log in and, and all that data is there once that invoice has been put through, whether it's digital or paper. That has been shown to reduce the overall AP cost by up to 80%. Um, and that's a huge number. And, and, and we have ROI cost, ROI calculators, you know, that we can provide for you as well as you're building this case for the solution. It's been said over and over. You actually saw Michael walk through the steps to, to uh, get the solution up and running. And as you heard Sean say, literally three hours worth of implementation time and that customer was up and running. We use industry best practices for invoice workflows. You saw all the ways you can configure that and continue to configure as you go. That's the beauty of it. It's easy to set up. It's also easy to maintain as well as new people come and go or as policies are adjusted or changed. And you gain that complete visibility into your AP process. This is huge as, we're, as we talked about. You're working from different locations or you're continuing to grow and adding more divisions 
it's all in one spot. It's easy if we had more time and we will, if you if you want a one-on-one -on -one session with us, we'll happily go through. We'll show you how to, how to search for invoices, how to find things easily, how to run reports, see where everything's at and, and that. So it's not only easy to set up and, um, and maintain, it's easy to use and, and it helps you in your day-to-day -day life as, as you're walking through these processes as well as audit time. And that's, I know that's not a fun, a fun subject to bring up, but, but with a solution like this in place, uh, audits can, be, can go from weeks to literally days or even hours, because um, it's so easy to find things. And you saw right there, the history tab that Michael showed you, everything is there. Uh, every single action that was taken on that invoice is easy to see and display. A little bit about us, if you haven't met us before, hopefully um, you know, you, you've, uh, you've run into us before, but just in case, you know, we've been around and doing AP automation for nearly 25 years. We're based out of Phoenix, Arizona. So we're actually, entering in our into our nice season. I think we're finally dipping below the hundreds here, but uh, but we can't complain. And anytime you want to come visit us and, and do this in person, we're happy to happy to uh, show you the system. We've got 120,000, over 120,000 business users across the country and the globe. We're a Microsoft partner. Definitely our focus is fi financial solutions. So all the ERP systems there, you can see that we that we have solutions for and as you, uh, we touched on briefly, but again, we're happy to show this and how this applies to your situation. We are affordable and scalable, the new usage-based pricing that um, these, the technology, the AI-based technology has uh, helped us implement. It's really easy to get started. And then also we scale with you as you grow. And what I personally love about working here, well, among the many things <laughs> and the great people is that we do continue to innovate. You know, uh, everything you saw here, if you could see the smiles on our faces and the smiles on our customers' faces, and, and even Sean's story, as he as he discussed, we're constantly using the latest technology and meeting you where you need to go, and uh, happy to show you that again in a session uh, anytime you need to. As we run into the end here, we've got a few minutes for questions, so go ahead and type any in. I'm not able to, to see the question box, but Allie, if you want to share any that have come through, that would be great. We can uh, go over those. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, we have a few questions that came in. The first one being, is a business central license required for each Simply AP user? Great. Sean, you want to go over that one? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, you bet. So is it bit No, we have unlimited uh... Uh, unlimited licenses now. So that's our user model we've gone to. We've gone to what we refer to as a consumption-based pricing model, meaning it's really based on the number of invoices that you process on an annual basis. And so you buy a certain amount. Yeah, we do, you know, 5,000, 10,000, whatever it may be. You buy that count and then you, as you use it, you consume that, that, that amount throughout the year. So that's why it's called consumption-based. But with that, as I've already said, we uh, allow for unlimited users. So we don't care. We don't have different types of licenses and different tiers of license. No, just how many, just buy it, do it, set them up as you need to. Yeah. And it's not a one-for-one. -one. So every Simply AP user does not need to have a business central license. It's you, you could have three people run with a business central license and yeah. 50 people using Simply AP as approvers or whatnot, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Hopefully that answers the question there. Yeah. What's what else, Allie? We have another one. Um, do you have to be a BC user to use the program? Okay. Yeah. I think we, we, we just covered that one. Um, you don't need a BC license to have a Simply AP license and, and use Simply AP. Yeah, we, we come across that uh, situation commonly with with uh, regard to approvers and, and reviewers. You know, obviously, your uh, all of your management aren't going to be you know knee deep in, in the ERP itself, uh, but they can still approve and review uh, items from Simply AP as well as as process them if, if they need to as well. So they don't require a BC license. Yep. Okay, and we have just a couple more here. What if we need to add users to Simply AP over time? How is that handled? All right, MV, you want to do that? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, the identity provider that you set up when you do the administration of it, the the initial configuration, is is uh, supportive of the you know organic way of of managing users. So if you want to add additional users, you would simply add them to the Active Directory group within your Azure AD on your side, and then come into uh, Simply AP's administration portal. And at the click of a button, it'll resync 
the users. So if you do need to remove Simply AP users for whatever reason, again, unlimited users, so not necessarily uh, seeing the use case there, but if you do need to add additional, likewise, you can go ahead and do that on your Active Directory side and then resync them. Okay, and just one more question. How is product support provided and is it included? Yes, uh, definitely included. MV, do you want to touch on yeah. how it's provided? Yeah, definitely, 100%. Yeah, so we do have quite a bit of in-app support, as, you, as I mentioned, with the user tutorials, the user guiding, step-by-step -step kind of things, as well as a links to FAQs, knowledge base articles, that kind of thing. Uh, likewise, on the right-hand you know, edge of the program, you can expand that and, and get uh, uh, access to our uh, I believe it's help.simplyap.com, which again has, has quite a bit of information there. If you do need subsequent information above and beyond that, we do have in-house support on, on premises here with, with uh, uh, Enchoice, and we are available from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. That is Arizona time, so we can, uh, we can help you out there too. Yeah, unlimited uh, support is included mm -hmm. in, in, in the cost of the solution. Yeah. Yeah, you will have Sean's cell phone number, right, Sean? <laughs> yeah. I'm not the one you want to call if you have a technical issue or a problem. Right. No, no, no. Support desk is happy to help you. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Allie? Nope, that was our last question. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for having us, Allie, and thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. You too.